So one time when I was meditating, I was actually in a forest meditating for 50 days. And there was this one time about probably 30, 35 days in when I felt so much bliss, so much ecstasy, just like an explosion of bliss. And I thought I had died and gone to heaven. I was sure this is what heaven was like. And I truly could not imagine not being dead in, in heaven because it was just time stopped and angels were singing and um, it was incredibly magical. I mean, just like lights and colors and just magical. And I realized something. I realized that we never die and we're never born. We just change forms. We go from, you know, in our two parents, and then those DNA get combined and it and then that starts a transformation into a baby. And then when we die is just another transition. Some, some change. But beginnings and ends are really incomplete perspectives. They are only illusions if we fail to dig deeper and see what really came before the beginning and after the end. And what I realized in this timeless state of bliss is that we all have access to this and when you have it, it doesn't matter if it's for one second or 30 years because this is a timeless experience and it feels like eternity and as long as we can have that for one moment it doesn't matter if I died right then or the next day or the day after that because I have experienced heaven on earth and one moment is enough to change your entire life and to just relax in this knowing that this potential exists. One thing that came to my mind when I was deep in meditation and I felt that the walls were breathing with me, like my eyes were closed, but I felt like the space around me was breathing with me. And I got this funny idea in my head that what if the universe is conscious? And what would that mean? And there is some theoretical physicists who theorized that actually the universe is conscious and that everything has consciousness and that every atom has consciousness and there is even some evidence that shows that this may be true in the sense that um, we can see things like algae where there's single-celled organisms and this almost intelligence among it arises even though it's separate they can all act in perfect synchronization at the exact same time, like faster than the speed of light can travel from one side to the other, the whole thing can move instantaneously, which is 
a very strange phenomenon. And so what occurred to me is if the universe is conscious, or even if we choose to act as if it is, what would that mean? And what you would come to is we would all be much more gentle and mindful in the way we interact with every living being, but even every non-living thing. You know, we would show gentleness and kindness to everyone's homes and every piece of furniture we would feel gratitude for. And when we interact with a conscious being like a dog, we We'll pet the dog to show our affection. And we express our love this way. And the dog, of course, smiles and wags his tail and expresses its gratitude. But we can still express that love to every chair, every paved road. There is so much to be grateful for and to show our love to and for and it doesn't have to show it back for us to live a more mindful way and if we whether we believe that the universe is conscious or we just choose to act like it and we act as though when we show the universe love the universe shows us love back tenfold and if we were to act as if the universe is conscious, which it very well may be, then we would each be more kind, mindful, and gentle and loving to the universe around us. And this universe would come alive with magic and we would feel the universe's love and embrace of ourselves. And just touching and really being fully present with the chair, feeling the energy of the person who created it and designed it and their family that supported and loved that person. And we can just be fully present and aware of all of the people, all of the things that go into every little thing in our lives. And a sense of oneness and connectedness arises when we interact with the universe as if it was conscious and if it had feelings. And simply by paying attention when we touch something or sit on something or walk on something by giving it our full attention and being fully present which is the greatest gift you can give any being we feel love we feel gratitude and we feel present and so there's really no downside to acting as if the universe is conscious, and it very well may be. I think life is a miracle, and miracles are perfect. A lot of people have become very disconnected from their true nature. They've become so fixated on this physical, temporary existence that they fail to see that timeless, infinite dimension of oneness. It's understandable. In our society, there isn't a single place where peace is taught, promoted, and popularized like the things that make us miserable, which is chasing material wealth. We've confused the fact that the happiest life is not 
as good as the life with the most stuff and experiences. And that is just the greatest failing of our society. If we could realize that it's better to be poor and happy than rich and suicidal, then half, half of our suffering could be over because the first step is just realizing the error of our ways. You know, a lot of people wonder why should we love this warmonger or this person who abuses animals? All these questions. And it's easy to say that person's sick, and it's much harder to admit that society is sick and that maybe I have some responsibility. But the truth of the matter is we have to love those people because clearly Hitler, Osama bin Laden, and so many others were not taught peacefulness, kindness, and mindfulness. And you can want to say, I hate that person, I condemn that person, that person's a lunatic and is an abomination and an anomaly and not like what humans are. But if we dig deeper, if we look closer, we see that they arose out of their environment and they did what anyone would really do in their shoes. And instead of condemning with hate, we have to really channel that love with inside of us and really try to see that only love can prevent such horrors. And in a way, loving others is the most selfish thing we can do because we get love back. Even if we don't want it or are not asking for it, we get it back. And it is the only way to get rid of any negativity and suffering is to truly love. And again, it doesn't mean putting yourselves in harm way, harm's way. It just means creating a better world for everybody. Mosquitoes? Just a few. Oh, something. Oh, or your skin has turned red. I don't think that's a big deal. Just bugs everywhere. Um. Oh, these are like huge ant over there. <laughs> yeah. Did I get it? No. Wait. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 